Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Carrie Orifice of Off Grid Knives. Off Grid Knives burst onto the scene in 2016 when Carrie, the company's founder and designer, left his nine to five to follow his passion. Eight years later, Off Grid is selling over 80 different variants of its many different models, and it's earned a reputation among outdoorsmen and knife enthusiasts alike for robust purpose driven folders and fixed blades. I've bonded with many of the off-grid knives in my collection and regularly sing their praises here as some of the sliciest, best utility cutters that I have. But Carrie's most recent release has me absolutely over the moon. So we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and tell a friend about the Knife Junkie podcast. If they don't think uh, that you're crazy, they will absolutely love the show because what's not to love? All right, we'll get to it. Uh, if you want to help support the show, you can do that at theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Carrie, welcome back to the show, sir. How's it going, Bob? I'm back. It's going it's going well. It's always good to have you. Always good to see you. Last time we saw you, it was during Knives Live, uh, when you did the right. the uh live show uh in 2022, 23, something like that. That's well right with Doug. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was a lot right. of fun. Yeah. So uh, I gotta say, uh I'm absolutely in love with the new Mamba three. Let's talk about that first. I want to say congratulations on this release because uh, this yeah. has got to be my favorite so far. Oh, Tell nice. me about this love, knife. love hearing that. Um, yeah. The original was uh, way more of an EDC size. Um, it was, it was closer to a size like this and then, you know, it jumps to, you know, <laughs> the difference is so big that I wanted to make sure that there was a very, very big difference. And uh, yeah, and of course, the the big difference was not only making it bigger, better, faster, stronger, but <laughs> what Magna Cut. So Magna Cut was that next level type of steel that I really wanted to um, offer. And it's not the easiest thing to to acquire and it, and it just took a while. And then finally I was able to get it. And so it was the perfect opportunity to, to revamp the original mom, uh, black mama, which is now the mama V3. I had the V2 out. And so, yeah, it's getting like really good reviews. I already sold out of the one that you just showed. So the coyote gold is sold out. I'm already remaking them. So we're making them as fast as possible. So the good news is it's sold out. Bad news is it's sold out. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but anyway that's all good oh i mean that's fantastic news you you were kind enough thank you sir to send two over here uh this yeah. one has uh, i've adopted it it has become mine i mean what am i uh, yes. i'm i'm only so strong uh but we are giving away the black one which is arguably okay. uh you know arguably i should have the black one to match my black mamba uh v2 which is uh, so awesome. But uh, I want to talk about the Magna Cut uh, part of it. Um, yep. Obviously, it's a very uh, popular steel for its, you know, kind of uh, getting close to get it, having all three qualities of a desirable steel in one steel. Uh, but besides its demand, what, what do you like about Magna Cut or what have you found out about Magna Cut? I mean, really, it's all about we, every steel that's come out throughout history and that, that have gone into a knife everyone's looking for that balance. And, you know, whenever you give something else up, it wrecks something else. You know, you go for corrosion resistance, well, something else is going to suffer. And this, I think, is one of the closest ones where you can hit almost everything, including the sharpening. You can even resharpen it very well, even though you're at like an HRC of 62, 63, and it hits all of that. And so to be able to check all those boxes in one steel um it's really it, to me it's the crown jewel of the steels 
But um, I know there's so many out there. But this one, and it, of course, it has the big name. People love it. People want it. And it does create more of a, a, a draw to the design. But the fact that I combined it, that people are liking the design, <laughs> kind of, uh, it all worked out. Well, uh, the, the interesting thing about uh, Magna Cut is that, um, yes, it's it's true. Laren Thomas, uh, who invented the steel, is a steel professional, but he works professionally in automotive steel. He's a knife <laughs> steel enthusiast. So so basically, he created this enthusiast level knife steel for knife enthusiasts. Uh, right. And that's kind of cool. Uh, I haven't thought yeah. of it quite like that, but you see it come out in knives like like this where... Um, I mean, you could have made this out of, uh, you know, D2 and I'd still be over the over. I'd be nuts about it. I, I love the size, the feel. I like how it's a little bit thinner than the than the Enforcer XL uh, yeah. sort of uh, tough cousin analog, uh, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with the Magna Cut. Um, so how did you. Uh, so you mentioned 6362. Is that what you had this heat treated to? Um, we should, yeah, it, when you, you know, it's PVD, it's not DLC, but, but when you put the PVD on it, it does drop it down a little bit. So it's closer to uh, 62. 62. Okay. Yeah, which is fine, which I think is very acceptable. I think I'll I'll only notice when I'm carving stone plinths with it. <laughs> right, uh, right. For, for me personally, um, I, I just, I like knowing that something is a performer, but I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be pushing the steel. Uh, to really test it, but I know others right. do, so it's important to them. Yes. Um, yeah. There's a lot of knife nerds out there. So uh, with, with yes, yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely am that. Uh, well, just, you're you're a knife junkie. There's a difference. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I I I have a certain uh, undignified desperation to me that. that Which age. let me say this. Let me say this. I got your Nova One right oh, here, the brother. OG, the original. <laughs> that That's here a beauty. We go. I'm oh. telling you, I use it around the warehouse. I dig it. I love it. This is a very cool knife for your first one. So awesome. I just want to say kudos to you. This is really, really nice. Love it. And I know you got the second one. Is it already out? The second Thank one? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's in the works right now. So in the we works. Had a, yes. Yeah. Uh, and nice. So, oh, uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, so getting getting Magna Cut, you said, was difficult. Is that because it's in high demand now? I know at first it was rare, but. Yeah, no, it, it's in it's in high demand. And, you know, Best Tech makes this. So I'm dealing with an overseas situation here. And so the, the logistical issues with it is really what I'm talking about when it comes to that, hmm. uh, to make sure they get that steel to get the right, you know, um, thickness and, and so forth. So it was really the, more about that. And then sometimes there wasn't enough. And I, I was cut out a, a bunch of times where it, it didn't happen. And I was really bummed out. So the moment there was enough, I uh, jumped on it. And so I just secured a bunch more mm. because I'm going to be putting it into the Scorpion knives, which have sold oh, out. Yes. So the V2s, which is this guy right here. You have it there? Yeah, this is the V1. There we go. Yeah. Yes. So here's the V2. That's the V1. So this will then be Magna Cup, but I'm going to make it broad. It'll similar to the changes with the uh, Mamba. It'll be broader blade, hmm. same shape, same kind of uh, inlays and things like that. And so, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm hoping people will love that as much as the Mamba V3. I think they will. It's really cool. I'm pretty excited about it. But uh, we're in production right now, so I, I'm going to have two versions coming out, hopefully before Christmas. That would oh, be nice. Cool. <laughs> well, I want to talk about the Scorpion. Uh, I love this yeah. knife. It, it it has certain qualities that reminds me another of a of a classic knife that I adore. And then when I look at them next to each other, they don't look anything alike, but they have a similar vibe. Okay. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to. I, yeah. I, uh, I'm interested. Uh, so we were talking about the Magna Cut and Best Tech. Uh, we know that. Uh, best tech manufacturers some of your knives and then you have a uh, some taiwanese uh, manufacturers so if that's any indication if you're not familiar with an off-grid knife but you like the design this is a little aside if you like the design it's either made by best tech or in taiwan by an amazing manufacturer so um if you're if you like the design 
it just get it you know it'll be awesome uh nice. but uh i'm interested in the fact that magna cut is an american steel so it gets shipped over there and and gets worked on and turned into blades and then it comes back so there's a lot of back and forth uh, uh that's an interesting process when you're asking for foreign steel on a foreign made knife it is it's a little tricky there's there's a lot of moving parts there and you know it's it's um it's heavy it's bulky mm, yeah. it's uh there's just a lot of moving parts and you're hoping that it gets there okay and and everything checks out and that it's what it's supposed to be and and they heat treat it correctly and cut it right all that stuff and then when i ended up with the prototype i was i was like full go so we went in as, as soon as possible and started making it because it, it worked out so they got the steel and jumped on it and then i immediately said let's work on the uh scorpions and and get that going and now of course now my head's spinning and i'm saying i'm gonna do a fixed blade in magna cut so now i want to do a fixed blade in magna cut you know all right, so right. i'm gonna blade. i'm gonna take a note because we gotta we gotta talk about that at some <laughs> point but the way Go my ahead. brain works uh but i uh with uh uh with the what we were talking about with getting the steel over there, having it manufactured, then you get prototypes. There's a lot of back and forth. I have to imagine. I mean, I was thinking of uh, guys just like you last week when that longshoreman, that East Coast and Gulf Coast longshoreman strike happened for two days. I was like, this is going to be a disaster for a lot of people in the knife industry. Was that something you were sweating? A little bit. Yeah. Now, now I'm on the West coast, I'm in Southern California. Right. So right. I was, the only thing I was sweating is that it would eventually kind of, you know, uh, creep in to the West side and it didn't. Right. So, you know, luckily that has subsided, but yes, I did sweat that out a little bit, but I'm sure the guys on the East coast were freaking out, you know? Yeah. 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 Right. Of course you're on the yeah. other side, you're closer to, to China. That's like, that's a better deal. <laughs> Yes, I, I was I was freaking out like God. Are we going to be hoarding toilet paper again here? I mean, like, yeah. is that what we're going to do? Uh, yeah, I saw that. People were were going to Costco. There were lines around Costco. Yeah. Oh no, here we go. That's yeah, ridiculous. Well, yeah. okay. So uh, I want to talk about your your Scorpion um, revamp yeah. and such. But but before we get there, we still have more to talk about here. I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, some aspects of this that uh, I really like that you carried over from. I know it was in the first Mamba, and yeah. it made it. Uh, and and then, okay, I'm just talking about the old school file work, and then it made yes. it over onto the. Um, uh, so that's the Viper V2. The Viper V2, and this was one of those things that I did really early on in the in just as a design. Uh, you know the the cutouts uh, not on the top regular jimping but the side right yeah so i called them cutouts and, and i know there was old school kind of uh that's kind of old school jimping in a way but mm -hmm. i just like the way it looked i mean yeah. really that's what it, can you use it as jimping yes but then i said i love jimping in general i'm like it's it's great so i always end up extending it a little bit further than most knife makers so i always end up putting it up because sometimes i like putting yeah. my thumb way up there i like putting my finger way up there and why not put a grip up there, right? A lot of times it, it stops it. right here and I'm in my fingers up here. And that always bug me. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it, oftentimes it's only accommodating like a saber fighting grip. Like you're using <laughs> yes. your knife like this all the time. Yes. Uh, but yeah. yeah, like, I like how you extended it all the way up the blade. I love that it's a four inch blade. Uh, yes. I, to me, like when I started collecting folders, they were all four inches, like the, the, the bench made eight. CKF and the early spider codes and early yeah. uh, cold steels. So I'm, I've yeah. always been tuned into this size. It's perfect. M me too. Me too. And then it, it kind of things started shrinking down. I mean, before I, when I was just collecting and, and getting things really, I mean, when ZT, I think it was the 0300 or 03, what is it? Uh, you know, the tiger stripe one, mm -hmm. yeah. I forget the number of that. But that's a B. It didn't have a four inch blade, but I said, why it should have a four inch blade on it. Yeah. And uh, that was a huge inspiration for me before I got into this was some of those big fat ZTs. And I already love just doing the giant handles. So handles are always my go to. I always start with the handle and then end up with the blade when I do the design. So that's kind of how I, I work it because I love the beefy. It comes from the whole tools background. 
Mm -hmm. And I love tools. And in our first interview, you called me a tool junkie. And you're right. That's right. A tool junkie. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Something that works well with your knives that I have found doesn't work well with a lot of knives is uh, resizing. uh, We're going to call it resizing by percentage. Uh, For instance, Mm -hmm. um, let's look at the the Mamba V2 and the V3, the Black Mamba V2 and the v3 these are i i cannot distinguish a difference um you know besides very very minor differences like you know very minor differences but in terms of the profile i swear to god it just seems like it's a a percentage difference like you could do this and it would fit perfectly and 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 i find that oftentimes uh that doesn't always work with certain designs no No. you can't just say you know bump it up 15 percent or 10 percent or whatever it's true. You got to get into the inner workings of it. And that goes into the whole CAD situation, which I've told you a million times. I don't mess with CAD. And so we go back and forth on that to make sure it's exa- like exactly the same, but just like what you said, yeah. so that you can't really distinguish the two, but even though they're not exactly a percentage exact, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you yeah. Gotta make those tweaks in between. That's all part of the making process. Right. You can kind of see that in the shapes of the pommel a little bit. You can see that there are differences, right. but yes. but really it. And then another thing uh, that you uh, I think you do very well when designing is that you yeah. take your smaller knives and you keep them the same width as your larger knives. And a, a real extreme example of that is is the uh, is with the rhino, with the rhino and the baby rhino. They are the, the same ba- width. The baby. Yes. They're yes. the same width, and but width. Uh, that makes the baby rhino, which is tiny, uh, tiny, really easy to use. It's really easy to like get a full fist grip on, even it though my, my pinky dangles over, you know. Right, exactly. So that that was a fun one for me. I wanted to go. I think <laughs> I call it full baby. So this is like a full baby knife where it's so small. Some people. Even with my photos, even describing it, even putting the measurements and the weight and everything, yeah, they get it and they're shocked how small it is. But then they put it in their hand and they're like, wait a minute, it doesn't feel small. And that yeah. was the whole design purpose of the baby rhino was to make it feel bigger, but it's really small. So it's and I'm in California and a lot of people are bringing up the whole legal stuff. Mm. This is very legal. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. You know, and New York, you know, they're very yeah. strict. Uh, yeah. something, something about the baby rhino that I love is this yeah. continuance of the jimping, like you were there talking about over there. there um, it is. If there's a V, is this the V one? That's the, that's the two. Or so the two. you know, what's going to happen with the, with the three, right? Okay. The uh, jimping, presumably. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The fact that it wasn't there, I was really upset with myself. I said, how could you miss that? But it's still cool. It's still fine. You can still get your finger up there, but it really yeah. needs that jimping there. A jimping yeah. opportunity. Actually, it really yeah. doesn't need it. But for those of us who are jimping mm. junkies, if you want to say, yeah, yeah, it feels feels really good. I love this knife. My uh, my dad, nice. after your very first interview, my dad got me and my brother both off-grid knives. And he got my brother this, and nice. he got me the backcountry. And I love that knife. But I was like, I, I also want the rhino, dad. <laughs> There yeah, we go. I'm, I'm working too. on I'm working on a fixed blade of the Rhino. So it'll have a very similar profile as the Rhino. It'll be a Rhino fixed blade. That's a good idea. Uh, uh, I, let's talk about the Scorpion um, um, yeah. uh, retooling. What are you yeah. planning on for this? The Scorpion now, before uh, before this came out, the Mamba yeah. V3. Yeah. Uh, and, and the Black Mamba V2. I would say that the Scorpion is kind of your flagship, right? The Mamba one was the first elite series. And then okay. almost time simultaneously, I did release the Scorpion one, which is that the one? This is the one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then came out with some limited edition with some copper and yep, black inlays and carbon fire, all these different combinations. Um, so it's been fun really working with the series of the uh, Scorpions. And so, Having you know now Magna Cut to jump in and and uh, be on that knife that design that's already proven people already love it mm-hmm. but I'm gonna just make sure that it's broader so the bottom of this blade is gonna be down here and oh, cool. still have that harpoon ish kind of feel 
and uh, made some other small changes. But for the most part, it'll be the Scorpion. You'll know it's the Scorpion. Just be a little bit beefier with Magna Cut. Broader blade. So what what inspired the broader blade? It's kind of like the Mamba. It's, it's something that if I'm going to go a little bigger, it's really the handle. So this handle to me always, this people love it. And for me, this was a small handle. I felt like it always needed a little more, but people loved it so much. Don't mess with it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't mess with it. And so now that I have an opportunity to mess with it again, yeah. I'm going to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to do what I always do is make the handles a little broader, a little thicker. Just, I like having that full purchase on the night. It's just, that's another thing that I have to do now. It's like, I can't have a, 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 a small handle. It just doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. Oh, that's cool. So uh, are, are you going to be varying the finishes and such? Because this is kind of a new finish for you, this golden. It is. You know, we tried to do, and when I worked with Best Tech on that color, we were trying to mimic our usual coyote tan color. Yeah. But because it's titanium, they were they kept working on it and working on it, and they just they were doing batch after batch and they just couldn't get it right. And I said, Well, let me let me let me work with you here. Let's see see what we got. And they had little variations of it, and and then it started getting a little goldish. And I'm like, that's like coyote gold. So uh and then I said, Well, maybe that's too blingy or something, and people won't like it. And then all of a sudden I release it and they're gone. So uh, I was really happy with that. Surprised. I got to be honest. I was surprised. Don't uh, don't you find that your coyote models sell faster? Didn't you tell me that? They do. They do. So it's it, it used to be the blackout, and now it's more the coyote plus the gray <laughs> has that nice combination that people yeah. really tend to gravitate to. And so I usually launch it with that. And the ones with just the basic stone wash blade don't they just don't sell as well. So I start with two. If they do well, kind of like the Mambas, I want to maybe come out with a different variation of that as well, since they sold out so well. Um, and same with the Scorpion. So I could be doing different types of inlays, all sorts of things. So as you know, you go down the rabbit hole and all of a sudden there's, you know, yeah. 80 different variations. It's like, oh. Well, especially so. if you have a uh, an enthusiast uh, market around a, a certain knife. I mean, there's no reason to not... Uh, do sure. that you're of course you're going to sure. keep making it but why not yeah. make it even more collectible and desirable you know yeah. spider co learned that lesson pretty well that's true that's true it's it's something that we strive strive for and then like this mom i i this is you can if you can kind of see the scales yeah what almost has like a like in between the black kind of came out we're what i told them i wanted uh gold uh traced around the um at the hexagons sort of, okay and then i you know and i never do the milled clips okay that's just something mm-hmm. i don't the functionality of a milled clip to me with the straight just it doesn't work with me however i know people like it people mm-hmm. always ask me why don't you do the milled clips and i don't know i might offer some um secondary markets where people want to swap them out they can yeah but what's your opinion on the milled clip versus the regular you know, uh, I, I well i gotta say i i really like your clips um here here are three examples that yeah. i really love uh the the new the one on the new mamba i love i love this on the rapid yeah. fire that's awesomely yep. done and it's very similar on the mamba v3 I also like that you're putting filler tabs in. So, but I personally, on this kind of knife, which to me, um, for instance, the new one is is a is a big mix between luxury knife and yeah. robust adventure knife. But I I mostly look at your knives as robust adventure knives, and yeah. to me, mill it. That's not where you put a milled clip. You put a milled clip on something a little more precious, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. So this was uh, just a prototype that I wanted to uh, tinker around with. I even added like a lanyard area for it. And um, so this might be like, let's see, it might be a limited uh, edition. Let's see if I get a focus. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so it's something I'm kicking around and wanted to, to mess with. This was actually made in Taiwan. So 
I'm just, you know, I'm playing with some, some new ideas and stuff and, and testing it out. So, so how, how do you decide between um, manufacturers? Well, I, as a kind of a rule of thumb for me, my fixed blades for the most part, all, actually all the fixed blades are made in Taiwan. Okay. And then certain designs that I want really robust, mm -hmm. like extra robust, like the, um, mm, yes, Viper V2, this I wanted extra robust. This is our, actually our number one seller right here. Oh, really? And yeah, people absolutely love this. I can't make them fast enough, which is great. Um, so when I make something like this that I know is going to be tactical, but also useful and mm -hmm. it could be camping or tactical. I don't know. So I, I usually go with my, my fixed blade people, which is Taiwan. And then sometimes, um, you know, the, the Mamba V3, I think best tech just, they've been doing my, um, elite series stuff and I just stick with them because yeah. they know what they're doing. Yeah. And, and that's kind of how I do it. It's, it's really the, the style of the knife is what decides it. Uh, you mentioned your fixed blade knives and I, I got to tell you something's happening here with me. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll start, I'll start by saying, um, uh, this, this knife I'm not counting in this conversation because I find it so useful and it gets a lot of use, uh, when we travel, uh, this, this nice. gets busted out the grizzly. I love it, but it's not yeah. only a kitchen camp knife to me. It's a modern Hudson Bay knife. It's very much like a Hudson Bay trader's knife to me. Um, nice. I love and, that. And, and I do too. I think it's a cool knife. I always loved that, uh, historical knife, you know, for traders and, uh, you know, you could use it to skin and you can use it as a weapon. You can use it for, for food prep. This thing is yeah. amazing. I'm going to take this it. out of the conversation for a second to say that yeah. I've always been way more on the tactical end of things in terms of my taste. So when yeah. the Grizzly, when this came out, I just about <laughs> lost it. All right. So this, this is my, um, this is one of my bedroom defense knives. Oh, jeez! Uh, I yeah. pity the fool that walks in on you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mr. T, I pity the fool. Uh, Good yeah. Call. With that, with that swedge and that upswept, you know, that, that would just open, open someone up. But I have recently been um, uh, getting into uh, discovering yeah. outdoors stuff a little bit more, like survival yeah. skills, starting okay. fires and carving stuff up a little bit and this and that. Right. Trying to get a little bit more outdoors. And I'm starting to look again hey. at, <laughs> at your Kephearts. This is the Razorback, right? Razorback. The, uh, Ridgeback. Ridgeback. I'm sorry. Razorback. Yes. Uh, and, and, and so it first came out in in the um, Scandi ground blade, which I love. And, yes. you know, it's got a nice heft to it because of all the meat on the blade. And then when yeah. you came out with the full flat ground, I was like, whoa. Yes. Uh, to me, this like really shot up past okay. this. But nice. now that I'm actually starting to noodle around outside, I'm coming back yes. to this one now. <laughs> that, that thing cuts like a laser. It's crazy how good that cuts. But yes, what a great chopper, batoning and stuff. And then the other one gives you that, I don't know, feather sticking a little bit more. I mean, they both do the same thing, but the flat grind kind of changes yeah. it up for you a little bit. It does. I mean, to me, this is, uh, this I see more as a, an all arounder. This is like a, put yeah. it on the, <clears throat> put it on the belt for, for backyard cleanup and, and yeah. camping and everything. But this to me is like, yeah, I'm going to carve a spoon or I'm going to like make a shelter or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yes. uh, I have used this to baton. Yeah, I use this uh, to baton uh, the kiln dried wood I get at the grocery store, you know, which is nice. You know, yes. I'm, a, I'm a suburban adventurer and it pops it right open. I yes. think it's that. Uh, so, how, you know, you, you you're you kind of halfway between, you know, you make these very great outdoors knives and then you also make this, which is marketed as an outdoors knife. But let's face it, it's a little bit also tactical. Uh, yes. How do you how do you decide or like? What what's the inspiration? What half the time it's adventure gear, half the time it's battle gear. What what's the distinction? Uh, I think I probably I think I remember telling you the story on that. You named that, and I love the name. It's so good. Uh, the back the back alley. Yes, <laughs> the back <laughs> alley. It. So good. And so it could be either the back alley or the back country. So it's yeah. that mix between the tactical and that. And really, what what it came down to 
is, uh, and I think I explained that to you, that Amazon was getting a little weird and oversensitive mm -hmm. about knives. And so instead of calling it the back alley or something like that, where it's totally tactical, yeah. because it does have a pretty good, people take it out, they take it in and they, they use it in the woods, they use it camping and it really works like that. It just looks not, it doesn't look like a typical yeah. camping knife. But uh, I just kind of went that direction just to kind of see how it would go. And it went pretty well. <laughs> well, you know, I, I see a recurve. And, of course, I think, oh, that's combat. But uh, And it's a uh, it's a really beautiful blade. Uh, but it's good also that recurve. You can get in there, you know, feather stick and all that. That's exactly what I was going to say. This actually happens to be just an extremely yeah. useful blade. It's just my yeah. eye. My eye sees it. And actually, it reminds me a little bit of a Walter Brend uh, blade shape. Uh, that his number two, uh, nice, <laughs> which is just something I'm fond of, but yeah, well, it's uh, interesting because I, you know, I'm friends with the local, uh, cops, the canine cops. Okay. Uh -huh. So I I'm, I'm involved with them and they're, they're when they raise money and all this sort of thing, they're great guys. And, um, I hook them up with knives every now and then and so forth. And so it's interesting to see what they choose. Mm -hmm. And my two guys, did their own little rig on their belt. They have all this gear, but he picked that knife for the blackout one for his tactical use. So I found that interesting that he, he picked the back alley, which is the back country for yeah. his police work, you know? Yeah. And uh, the other day he told me a story, uh, you know, they got a canine. His, his dog is his name Thor. I mean, it looks like Thor. this dog, it comes up to here on me, his head's this big. It's just unbelievable. And he, and he had me, um, he had me hide uh, a knife. He goes, okay, take this knife and go hide it somewhere outside the warehouse. Just make it really, really hard. So he said, so he takes the knife, the dog sniffs the knife. And then he, he stayed inside the warehouse. I go outside and I go outside of a fence. He said to make it hard and I slip it under a fence and I push it as far as I could. And then he gives them these like crazy commands. Thor runs outside, turns around, sniffs around, going crazy, jumps over the fence, oh my grabs the knife, jumps back over. I'm like, these guys are the best. It was awesome. Anyway, that's my, my uh, canine story. It was so cool. So they stop by every now and then. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, make sure you have everything hidden before they come over. Anything illicit. Right. Yeah, actually, right. I was I was at work once and they did the same thing with uh, it was a uh, I was shooting a video for the police around here and they wanted to show off. They had a basset hound like right out of a movie and he found me, you know, I, right. I hid in the woods and he found me and he was so cute oh. about it, too. He wasn't scary. <laughs> it was just the cops <laughs> that were scary. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but okay. So when you made the switch to this, what was the need? Yeah. I, I'm, I am interested. How, why did you, and do you offer both? That is the Scandi ground version of the Ridgeback yeah. and now the flat ground. I let the, the Scandies fade out and mm -hmm. I'm deciding if I bring it back. I've had some people ask about it. For the most part, the Scandi grind didn't sell uh, they, when it sold, it was great and everybody loved it and rave reviews. It just didn't sell as quickly. I don't know if it's the grind and people um, who aren't familiar with that type of grind doesn't, they can't compute or know what the heck that is. It's not a typical look, but the knife guys or people that are really out doing real work out there, they loved it. And so it was just more of a sales situation where it didn't sell as quickly, but when it did, people loved it. So that's all. I'd love to make more. I might make more. I think I will. Um, and maybe round the handle just a hair. It's a little squared off for me. So I might round it just a tad and make a few extra changes, maybe uh, more of a 90 degree angle on that one for, you know, uh, striking oh, a ferro rod and things like that, it. you know. So it's on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a constant. Um... Well, it's like when you make a painting, you hang it on the wall. Every time you look at it or walk by it, you're like, ah, you know, I really botched that hand or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a great analogy. That really is. So so one. then you, you get to change. And that's a that is uh, something that I talk about when I talk about off grid knives and you a lot um, is the fact that you're nimble enough. Well, that you care enough and listen enough yeah. to make changes, but you're nimble yeah. enough as a company 
to yeah. um, to make these kind of changes as you hear uh, your your uh, uh, um, customers preferences and such. Um, for people who don't know, tell me a little bit about your business and 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 how you can be that nimble. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely we're a small family business, so that already, you know, you have less moving parts in that respect. I can make decisions quickly and execute the decisions fast. Um, and uh, typically, I I don't I make sure that I don't be a perfectionist about things, mm -hmm. which speeds things up. If you don't, you'll never it will never be, get released. But most of the time, it's really just the fact that I'm a smaller company and that I can just make these decisions without uh, without much. It was just like, boom, if that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing for me, no joke, is listening to the customers. And so I take these knives, I send them out to the market. And when people use them, I get the feedback. They'll email me. They'll leave those reviews, whether it's a good or a bad. I'll always email them if I can get their email. I'll ask them questions specifically, what didn't you like? And then I hear what most of the time, if people don't like it, you're going to hear about it. But, and most of the people that like it, they just like it and they won't say anything. So they just uh, use it and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just a really good knife, but it's, it's very, very important to me from the beginning to make sure that I listen and I make those changes. And I've been doing that from day one because drop the ego let it go. If you're, you know, that it doesn't bother me. If you don't like something, I'm cool with it. That's okay. Because I will likely make changes if there's enough people kind of saying the same thing. Do, you can't do make you, everyone happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that spirit is an absolute necessity if you're going into business, I would think. Um, yes. but do you think it, or in your experience or from what you've seen from others, is that a hard thing to do when you're in a creative field and you're making something um and and a lot of blood sweat and tears goes into that um is that a difficult thing to divorce yourself from sometimes i mean i think early on it was a little harder um and really it it comes down to fairness if someone's very they have a very nitpicky thing and trust mm -hmm. me knife guys can get pretty nitpicky and that's okay but uh a lot of times if it's that nitpicky, I let it go. That's okay. If it's a major flaw, which generally at this point, I, I feel like I haven't made those mistakes since the early days, mm -hmm. which is you learn, you know? And, um, but if I do hear something, I, it doesn't bother me. It won't bother me. And, and that's really important and make those notes. If there's enough people barking about it, then really look at it and then go back to the drawing board. Uh, presumably that's why everything, every one of your knives has a sunken clip with the flat screws and all that. Uh, you, you latched onto yeah. that quickly. I was like, mm, that's a smart yeah. move. Yeah. I, I heard that from someone. I don't know where I heard that. Uh, probably <laughs> everyone, a chorus, a chorus yeah. of dorks. Uh, yeah. so I would, uh, your relationships with these manufacturers, um, yeah. as, as off grid knives, as, a um, someone who's been, um, partnered with these manufacturers uh, since 2016 in one yeah. uh, version or another. Uh, do those relationships help in maintaining that sort of nimbleness? In other words, if I decided I'm going to make a knife and it's going to be just like Carrie's uh, and I'm going to call Best Tech tomorrow, they'd be like, yeah, that'll be like four years till I can get to you. <laughs> I think so. No doubt, especially over there, they appreciate loyalty. They appreciate mm -hmm. consistency. Um, and it really, you know, it, it's the same, I think, anywhere for the most part, but there are different cultural uh, things that you have to pick up on and be weary of. Um, but in general, it can, just comes down to consistency. And when you start to, because I'm, I don't really, um, to make those changes, I don't, I don't make it too difficult on them. Um, at this point, I'm pretty good at laying it down. And, and if there's something that isn't just right, a lot of times, if it's okay, I'll let it roll. And generally no one will say a thing about it. Mm -hmm. And so you learn to kind of just say, yeah, that's cool. Let's go with it. And, and just pull back a little bit and they appreciate that. And that will speed things up. So mm -hmm. 
Man, it could take a long time to get a knife out, as you know. And you had yours made uh, here, right? Uh, the, well, the one that you were holding is uh, made by a custom maker, yeah, up in, in yes. uh, Massachusetts. So, yeah. Hogtooth. Hogtooth, yeah, and it was a very, very small batch, and we're buddies, so it right. wasn't, it wasn't that there right. was no communication thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little different overseas, yeah. but you learn. It, it's really a learning process. I mean, um, right now, it's true. So if I need to go back into the, back into the, like for the the scorpion, that was a fast. Once once I saw the Mamba V three, and I saw the Magna Cut was cutting like a laser and everything was great. I immediately jumped on it. We worked on the design back and forth, back and forth, and I pulled the trigger. So we're off running and hopefully get it before Christmas. So we'll see. That'll mean that it moves pretty fast. Uh, yeah, I think I think going with uh, this as your most recent elite model, I think this yes. was such a great move. Uh, Thank you. The size of the, the knife. It's one of my favorite profiles of, of yours for sure. Excellent. Um, Love that. And then also the fact that it's a large knife, but it still feels more svelte in pocket than the Enforcer XL. Uh, I have the, yeah. I, I have a couple oh, there, of these, as you there know, you but, go. but yes. the Red Dawn, man, this thing is so yeah. awesome. Yes. Yes. Um, but have, something, uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say one more thing. I yeah. am going to be where I am working with another company Kunwu who oh, okay. uh, I know you know them yeah and a lot of people know them the reputation's big but they just started working with makers they actually reached out to me I looked and I didn't know much about them and so uh from what I see they make some really incredible artistic yeah. really super nice stuff so I have a really nice design on that one that I'm excited about oh, I don't man. know if it's going to be magna cut but it's going to be it's going to be a fancy schmancy knife. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, Kunwu, I have one knife by them and it's exquisite. And it's a, um, they did it with uh, uh, Les George and Alan Alishowitz. It's their, okay. ec their Eck folder. It's an integral. Um, so would this be under your shingle or would it be uh, Kerry Orifice de designing for Kunwu? No, it's, uh, it's going to be an off grid knives. Okay. I made it. It, God, it was something awesome. that I actually had. I had a, um, I can't believe I didn't bring it. Uh, I had a prototype made um, by Best Tech and then ended up saying this needs to be next. I don't know. Just it needed a little bit more. They reached out. The timing was good. I jumped in with them. And so we've gone back and forth on this. We're going to do an EDC version. It's called Polaris. So I'm going to do the Polaris EDC, Polaris XL. Oh. And so we're going to have uh, the two variations. I'm working on one with the, the regular swoop clip and one with the um, sculpted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. And so I said, I want to see both. So we're going to work on that anyway. I'm excited about that one and we'll see how that goes. So without, without uh, spilling the tea, give us uh, yeah. some sort of um inspiration for the knife what is the like tell us a little bit about the knife without telling us too much the um what i've never done on any of my folders and a lot of folders have this is you know you'll have that hole right here where you can do the flick yeah and i wanted that i was thinking of making a um uh you know a button lock i was thinking of making a um axis lock type situation um and so I'm kicking around those. It didn't work out with that design. Didn't feel good. But I'm going to basically have kind of a, a a gap right in here. So you'll be able to flip it as the normal flipper. And then you'll be able to flick it, which I don't have on any of my knives. People complain that I don't have thumb studs. And let me just, I don't like thumb studs. <laughs> so it's a personal thing. I don't like them. I just want the flipper there. It keeps the, the blade nice and clean. And... Mm -hmm. That's just me. And people are like, I want thumb studs. I said, all right, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it on the arches. Uh, if yeah. anyone is going to have a thumb stud, I feel like the rhino that has room work. for a, a stud or, or a hole. It um, does. You know, it's funny. I, I uh, Everyone who watches this show knows I've been complaining because I hurt my thumb. And and I'm getting feeling back in it and all that. <laughs> and, and I have 
been despising <laughs> i haven't been carrying anything with a thumb stud because my thumb is so sensitive oh, so lately man. it's been all about uh the all the about flipper. the flippers yeah got it yeah oh nice um what was i gonna say um oh i am working on a uh division of off-grid knives which is going to be off-grid gear Ooh. so i'm making uh, it's so just how we kind of has savivi mm -hmm. so i'm going to be taking a lot of knives so what i'm trying to do is in the lower make them with the best fit and finish as possible drop the steel to say a 7 cr or 9 cr or something like that mm -hmm. uh it could be aluminum handles could be frn handles and things like that but just make them as as nice as i can make them so the designs will still be great they'll be robust but i want those price points down yeah um it's it's needed i need that it feels like some of my stuff is priced out even though you know 80 bucks is a lot of money so uh, I want to get something down lower, but it'll still have that off-grid feel to it. But it's going to be my similar Civivi type situation. It'll be an off-grid gear knife. Yeah, that will open up also to you know I I made like a prototype, uh, you know, a compass, you know, old school compass, oh, you know, cool. so, so I can make like you know fun stuff like that that are outside the norm of you know the typical yes. uh, fire starters and things like that. So that just opens up uh, a channel to develop and create camping, survival, uh, self-defense, even possible gardening type situations and things like that will be off-grid gear. Well, this is, uh, I mean, your big love, I mean, just from talking to you in the past, uh, besides making knives or what really pushed you into designing knives is your love of outdoors and uh, yeah. the the sort of outdoor adventure kind of stuff so it it makes it stands to reason you'd be releasing gear for that kind of stuff not just knives, right but, yeah um, yeah it was something i've been thinking about for a long time and so finally it's starting to come to fruition and and i'm close and i'm, I'm working on it so fixed blades i'll have the folders um really nice price points and i think people will be really happy with the quality and they it won't break the bank and and so i could be moving those a lot faster and and creating yeah. more volume with those it's it's sort of a, a there's this term that that i like which is or an expression per perfect is the enemy of the good the perfect yes. is the enemy of the good so you can spend you know you were talking about the back and forth with, with your manufacturers and how if yes. you see something that's just ultra nitpicky you'll just let yeah. it go yes um uh, that is a perfect example of perfect as the enemy of the good you could go back and forth uh for the rest of time and and wait for perfection and never get yes. it, never sell yes. a knife uh similar to coming out with your own lexus well not lexus i guess off-grid is the lexus to your new toyota line if you will uh, <laughs> right or, or off-grid gear yeah. Uh, yeah meaning it's like the materials aren't perfect you might be getting 14 right. c28n right uh, and frn but it's still right. a stout build and the and the beautiful design exactly because look if you make it extremely sharp with excellent fit and finish a lot most people do you think most people on amazon know the difference between frn and g10 or, right. or yeah, they, they, they yeah. don't or the steels they don't know seven uh, cr and this as long as it performs as long as it doesn't break and it's not chipping and things like that, we'll make sure the heat treatment's right. As long as all that's on point, most people don't matter. As knife nerds, uh, we 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 it matters, right? Like we yeah. really think about it. Like, like most people don't. So I'm just trying to find kind of the out outside of the knife community world yeah. to buy my stuff, and I think Off Grid Gears is a perfect avenue for that. Yes, it sounds like it. And, and you know, I think a lot of people, there's there are either people who when their knife gets dull, they sharpen it, but they're not, you know, they don't they just get it sharp at, at whatever cost. And then that yeah. they burn through that knife. Or there are people who are like when it's just so dull, it's not going to cut. They're just going to throw it in a drawer and buy a new knife. <laughs> right. um, so right. so uh, a lot of it, you're right, like the steel doesn't matter. And and um yeah, I was just recently thinking about D2 and remembering how when D2 first came out, it was expensive. It was like, yeah. I remember I got a, I got a, a ProTech in D2. I was like, oh, sweet. I have D2 yeah. now. 
and yeah. now it's like oh you yeah. know i love d2 sorry yeah <laughs> d2 is awesome uh <laughs> you make a better steal uh <laughs> but but it's just funny like uh, uh most people don't care and d2 no. is is a better steal than most of us will need in a hundred years yeah. Yeah, and that's why I started cryo treating it just to give it that little bit of an edge, just to make it a little bit better, and that's been working really well. People, once they use it, they stop complaining, <laughs> and <laughs> and they're happy about it because the price point is right, and then it's yeah. tough as nails, and it goes forever without needing to sharpen. It's really nice. I love the steel. I admit. Now, it. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> now there, there is something I was thinking about because, uh, like I said, I've been here. Here's one I I haven't. I haven't busted out this one. I haven't really used at all, but man, what yeah. an awesome knife. And I, I yeah. see this in my future as I get more uh, into yeah. doing uh, outdoorsy kind of things for fun. Um, yes. But what about a hatchet? What about an off grid uh, ax hatchet or tomahawk? Is that in the I should, offing? I, sh I should have mentioned that I'm going to be releasing the hatchets will be in the off grid gear section. Okay. So I already have made so many prototypes. It's ridiculous. Um, so I have those waiting in the wings and those will be under the off grid gear label, but that's, those will all be ready to rock. So are yeah. you thinking like, uh, like f full tang, like the modern tomahawks we've seen a lot of, or more like yeah. an ax, like, a one of these kind of th axes, with probably a everything from a hand hatchet type uh -huh. situation where it also has the hammer on the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've tested, I mean, it, it's a trick hatchets are tricky. Um, you're getting into a whole different animal over here and, uh, and the steels, um, you know, I go out and I really, I, I pound on these things and I make sure and uh, that they're okay. And I really haven't had one that that passed yet. I have the designs, but I need the steel to be right. It's not right yet. I'll get it right. It's got to be something. It's, I mean, you're looking for like mostly toughness impact, right? Like, yeah, a like beater. You need it to absolutely <laughs> crush. So... That's something I'm going to do. I'm excited about that. And, and the one that you just showed, which is the X2, that's the Tracker X2. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be making a third version of that. And then I think you'll like this. I'm going to make an XXL of Ooh. that. Nice. So kind of like what I did with the uh, about about the same length as the Cayman XXL. Mm -hmm. And it'll it'll be that knife that you just showed uh, in a so it'll almost be like a, it'll look similar to a machete ish situation. Oh, yeah. So if you picture that in 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 a, uh, you know, an eight inch or something like that, I think that would. Um, yeah. 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 And so that will be something that I'm working on right now. So that's, yeah. So picture that that'll be a good chopper. So let me ask you this as a, as a experienced camper uh, outdoorsman um, when you go, but also as a knife maker, when you go out there uh, in the bush, do you bring a hatchet or ax or do you bring a knife? Uh, lately I've been uh, uh, my, I've been, my eyes have been wandering towards axes. <laughs> I I have yes I have I just haven't had any of my own and okay and uh, which you know the ones that I that I have in prototypes and stuff like that I've I've used and and done but a lot of times if I do I I love oh, the yeah. Alpha Dog this yeah. is one of my favorites um it, it's got like a cult following it's funny but uh um this one's a good one like if you really want to bring something out there that you know is going to absolutely do some damage and yeah you could do anything you want with it uh that's a really good one i love that one um but i'm also coming out with this is going to be I, I wanted a scout carry um edc fixed blade similar to yours so you you have a nice edc size yeah and i did kind of a similar thing Except, you know, of course, my handle is going to be, you know, a little bit thicker and so forth. So Ooh, it's got that. It's sweet. got the it's got the back country or back alley, back alley blade. And it's got the swoop in here with the jimping. And uh, yeah, that this is, is so cool, man. Yeah, it's fun. It's really, really fun. So I'm excited. This just went into production. It's called the sidekick. And I so would this you see the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah. Excuse my French, but that that is that's, a that's yeah. a 
that's a nice <laughs> yeah. nice looking knife man and and yeah. uh, i mean because uh i carry uh edc fixed blade two different ways either scout carry on the front like you have it set up for there like right in front yeah. of my belt buckle yeah. or in the waistband at three o'clock and in the waistband at three o'clock I need that curved handle to accommodate my, I'm a man of a certain age, you know, I got some, a little extra here and that yeah. curved handle looks like it'd be pretty comfortable. Yes, it is. And so uh, this is the prototype version, but we've officially gone into production on this. It took a while. You know, what really took a long time was getting the correct uh, scout carry and also vertical carry clip. Correct. Oh. Um, I ended up getting one that, it it's not this one it's it's similar but it'll it'll notch left and right okay so you can notch it notch it notch it and go all the way over so you can just turn it yeah. but it's got a lot of um torque to it Sim similar yeah. to uh, like what tops has offered yeah uh, yeah exactly oh that's yeah. cool so i'm excited uh, about that one that's a good one and then something else i thought was similar to yours was the hoglet i don't know if you ever had oh. the hoglet in your oh, hand. oh yeah i have, got the, I, I got the hoglet i love the yeah. hoglet <laughs> so this one this guy um i mean it people love this one i'm i call it one of my most comfortable knives i've ever made it's you very your, comfortable it melts and then this look, look at how it has that kind of s turn at the top yep. and then it's got the jimping of course the extra and bam your thumb hits right on it and it's got that kind of cleaver-ish look to it. Great all around camp, everything knife. Yeah. So it it can it's an EDC fixed blade. So now I, I wanted know to you add another list. You you don't design these necessarily for cardboard cutting, but I, I can't help but I gotta mention it here again. Like <laughs> you, you always know, say it. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> yeah. uh, but they always outperform other things in that in that task. Uh, they were great it. at other stuff too, obviously, yeah. but man, for, for cardboard, they just zip. And, and yeah. I, I have to, I have to imagine that has a lot to do with, uh, the, the geometry, the broadness of the blades, mm -hmm. uh, the thinness of the yeah. stock you choose. Uh, they're yes. just great, great cutters. It's true. You mentioned that a lot. Now I, I always laugh when I hear say, oh, these are great cardboard cutters. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's just, it's just Which funny. Which means, you I, know, they're also great at other things like I, I know. vanquishing I your know. foes and. Right, right. Exactly. And then I think you, you have, do you have the Sierra? This is the, mm -hmm. the, the new. Uh, oh no, um, that's cool. That no, oh, I, is, I remember seeing that. Uh, 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 Donnie B all day, I think showed this one off. Yeah. That this is cool. It, Yes, so this is the other chef knife. So I wanted to do something that was a little bit smaller than the Grizzly. Mm -hmm. And so came out with this, and it's got that geometry, that tri triangular kind of geometry, tons of knuckle clearance. And, I mean, it's it's robust, but also super thin, yeah. like, the, um, like the Grizzly V2. So people That's love this cool. in the kitchen. My wife uses it all the time. It's a, it's a home run. My mom uses it. She loves it. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> so well, that, very that cool. shape reminds me, you know, obviously it looks like a, a traditional European uh, chef's knife, excuse me, but it yeah. also looks like a French fighting knife and like that gaucho, the, the Argentinian cowboy knife too. It's got a cool, you know what I mean? Like that, that shape yeah. isn't just a chef's knife shape. It's also like a, a proven outdoor. Um, yeah outdoor knife and it looks like with that sharpening notch it looks like you could sharpen that like uh, a lot up up a to lot. that uh, yeah yeah up yeah. to that plunge grind so this was a fun one it it you know it people when they see this and it's uh it's it's marketed as a camping chef knife but also barbecue and stuff yeah. so i got some pit masters who were buzzing me up saying you know they have this on their side while they're just grilling tons of meat outside pit master going crazy. They love it. So most, uh, chef knives are not going to have, you know, this type of setup yeah, like exactly. you would. Right. And so they freaked out when they found this. So it's getting around the words getting out to the pit masters. That's so I think cool. that's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. It'd be the, so. be the, the barbecuers knife of choice. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Hey, Carrie, before I let you go, uh, I yeah. know that there are a lot of people, uh, knife enthusiasts who, frankly would like to be in your shoes uh mm -hmm. i might consider myself one of them uh but you know 
it's not easy being a owning a knife company, I would imagine. But I, yeah. I would also imagine you probably have a couple of good words of advice for someone out there who is an enthusiast who wants to break through and and do yeah. a little bit more with knives. What would you tell yeah. them? I, I would say that if if there was ever a time to approach um, a business, it could be any business where you're going to sell something. So if we talk knives, um, to throw something out into the market um, and see how it goes. First, you're going to have to develop it. You're going to have to do all these things, and it's going to be tough and difficult, and you're going to have to find the right people to do it. If you stick with it and just launch one, just get it out there. Sell it on eBay. Do anything. And it'll teach you the ropes. You'll it'll force you to go through the motions. And as you go through the motions, to and I'm talking primarily to sell online. Mm -hmm. So selling online is where it's at, especially when you start. Don't even think about anything else. Just get your stuff online. It could be Etsy. It could be anything. Get it out there. Show people your stuff and start selling it. And you'll start to get feedback. When you get feedback, make those changes. When you make the changes, you do it. And as they start to sell, you, you a light bulb is going to go off and you go, oh, I think I can do this. And then you make another one and then you just take your time and work your way up. So start small, but be very persistent. Don't stop. Oh, I love that. Start small, be very, very persistent. You started with one pen and one knife yeah, and look at where right. you are now. It, let me say this real quick. I got to get yeah. this in. Oh, yeah. So I, I did start with a tactical pen back in the day. And so it was always on my mind to make a new tactical pen. Now, this oh, doesn't cool. look like a tactical pen. And that was kind of the point. So I made a bolt action tactical pen. And every tactical pen, you go on Amazon, they're all tricked out. They look all tactical. They are obviously, if you're in the airport, it's going to get yeah. taken away. This yeah. is very inconspicuous, clean. It's got the hexagon texture in the front, so it's nice to write with. But here's the good part. So let's say uh, the bad guy's coming, or you got to break a window or something like that. It's one pop, and you're there. It's already done. So the, the tungsten carbide is there. Oh, nice. And so it's so fast. But here's the best part. Most don't have this. They have a tip on the other side or something uncomfortable. This will open up the other side to have a flat part for your thumb. Oh, now nice. you have a striker. And it one, it's lightning quick to deploy. And then also I had these uh, the ink from Germany imported. So I really wanted it to write well. I wanted people to actually use it to write. So this is my uh, second tactical pen going back to the very beginning. So I thought I'd do an homage to my very first thing that I started. But this is really exciting. I love this thing. I got the copper on it. And it's, right it's really, it's fun. It's fun. That pun was unintended when I said right on. But so when, when uh, is this uh, something we can buy now? Is that out yes. now? Yes. So I just, oh, it just got released. Okay. It's uh, it's on Amazon and it's on my website. So it's called the Bolt Tactical Pen. So I I came out and there it is, the Bolt cool. Tactical Pen. So pretty excited about this. It's 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 like an XL pen. So you know me with the XL. Yeah, it's an XL <laughs> pen. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Well, Kerry, I I want to thank you for a coming on the show. Also, I want to thank yeah. you for for sending us this. We are going to be giving this nice. away to uh, Gentleman Junkie uh, this month. That's the nice. Bullet V2. This is such an awesome bit driver. I have the V1. I love it. Use it all the time. Nice. Um, and then, of course, the beautiful um, uh, Mamba V3 that love we've been it. talking out about all night. Kerry, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking with you and getting an update from the off-grid world. I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Adventure Delivered. Your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Kerry Orifice of Off Grid Knives. Uh, uh, of an inspirational uh, knife company story. I love hearing that. Starting off with one product and working your way uh, just seems like a smart way to do it. Uh, can't wait to check out that pen, the Bolt pen. And of course, uh, if you're interested in winning your very own Mamba V3 uh, in titanium and MagnaCut, yes, four inches of razor sharp MagnaCut, 
Uh, go check us out at theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast mm-hmm.